Uh, obviously, really proud of our guys. Um, I thought they really battled. Um, and it was a typical game that we have with uh, Oregon, a typical game that I think Dana and I have over our careers. They're just always hard fought, and the flow of the games come and go. Um, team, different teams make different runs. Um, and I just thought we handled it. We had major foul trouble with Aaron. You know, it was very eerie, scary to game one in that we played the first half without Aaron. And now uh, we built an 11-point lead and had to take him out with four fouls with about 11 minutes to go. So um, he did a tremendous job playing about the last seven minutes with four fouls. And uh, he's just a special player. He makes play after play. Tom, for his entire career, has just given you so much consistency and – Again tonight, 14 and four, has four assists, couple blocks. Um, I thought Prince came off and really gave us a big lift off our bench that was much needed. And Chris, I thought Wilkes did some really good things um, with his length. I, I thought he was really good in a lot of ways. So just a good gritty, gritty win. And um, we separate ourselves by a couple games now from another team, so that's good. How much does it mean to you to get Tom this win, last home game here? To well, it's not just Tom. Um, it's four seniors and Tom, Gigi, you know, Alec and Ike. I, I, you know, I'd love to get them in the game and just, you know, the, the importance of this. And it was never – the game was so tight and so close, I wasn't able to do that. And I didn't want to – I haven't really been in the rotation, so I didn't want to mess that up with the guys. Uh, but they got to be ready because both those guys practice so hard and they get the guys ready to play. So all four of those guys – you know, I got three special managers that just do everything behind the scenes to help our guys in Nick and Sam and Joe and then Cavion with our student training. You know, those are eight special guys. So it, you, you want that for all those guys that are playing their last game in Pauley. In his, two game, in his two games before this, Chris Wilkes was two for his last 11 from three. Tonight, five for nine. What do you think was the difference there? Was he getting better shots? Was he in more of a flow? No, I don't know. I, I think he shot the three ball for his fr freshman year pretty good. You know, I think he's done – you know, he has, what, 19 again tonight. So, he's averaging uh, – I don't know what, what he's averaging for somewhere between 13 and 15 points as a freshman. Um, he's been in double figures a lot more than he hasn't. So I, I think his consistency for a freshman has been really good. I, I think he has um, really developed into a really nice player early on in his career. And this was obviously a huge game with a lot of, a lot of pressure on it. And I thought he stepped up and did a lot of good things. Coach, in the first half, 27 or 18 of the 27 shots were three-pointers. Was that something you addressed during halftime? Try well, not to no, because I thought it went through the post. I thought our efficiency in the first half was tremendous. We, what did we make, nine threes in the first half? And we shot 48%. Um, and we were, so we got good shots. So our guys make good shots. It's when the ball doesn't touch the paint, then it's a bad shot. And I thought that happened a little bit in the second half. But in the first, that's why Tom had four assists. Uh, we have to play through Tom. We have to play through the low post. He's that good. He's that talented. And when we do that, we get really good shots. So as long as the ball hits the paint and goes to the post first, I love those kick out threes because I think those are a lot easier shots than dribble, 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 fire. Those don't go in very often. You mentioned having to take Aaron out after you guys go up by 11. Obviously, that lead ended up disintegrating pretty quickly. What happened with him on the bench that allowed that lead to get away? Aaron was on the bench. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate to make it simple, but um, it, you can look at our how many games we played now. I mean, my vision's about gone. So, 26 games. Is that huh? So these records are wrong, right? So 27 games, and if you just if you look at all 20 of our seven games, what our plus minus is when he's on the court versus when he's off the court, you'll be totally amazed at what that is. That's how important he is. That's how good he is. We've said it all on. I think he is, in my mind, uh, Pac-12 Player of the Year is one of two guys. It's Aiton or it's Holiday. Uh, I think it's that clear cut now with two weeks left to go. I, I, obviously, Aiton is uh, on a team that's leading the league, and I think he's very special and he's had a special year. Um, but nobody's meant more uh, to their basketball team than what Holiday has meant to us. And um, it was again tonight when he's on the floor. Look at our – I bet our plus minus tonight uh, with him on the floor had to be somewhere between 15 and 20. Uh, what did we win by, seven or eight? And when he went out, he, we were up 11. 
So I bet his plus minus is beyond 15, and that means his what our plus minus is when he was on the bench, it was minus double digits. And that's the way it's been all year, uh, and that's why I play him so much. You know, I, it doesn't make you a good coach to understand keep Aaron Holiday in the game. Uh, I think a lot of coaches could understand keep Holiday in the game, but uh, there wasn't really any secret to it. It's You could see the other team. They increased their pressure. They increased their traps. We turned the ball over. We didn't get good shots. We didn't defend. Uh, that's how important Aaron Holiday is to us. There was a contested uh, replay with about five seconds left in regulation. Were you preparing for offense when you met with your team in the huddle? Did you both. think the ball was coming back? No, both, because we don't know. Uh, so we had already prepared. We prepared first if it's not our ball. Uh, we had five seconds to defend an OB play, and I thought we defended it really good. So we set our defense for the OB play, and then we had offense what we were going to run full court uh, with five seconds to go. So we were prepared e either way. I mean, you could, as long as it takes, you could pre prepare for maybe the first three plays in overtime too. So it, it, you got a lot of time to sit there and talk to the team about stuff. Coach, you guys showed um, great plays down four late in the game. Yeah, I, yeah and that's a terrific question because I, I agree with you. I haven't mentioned that. I, I thought, you know, you look at um, what's happened to us since Michigan, Stanford on the road. Um, we've really learned a lot of valuable lessons, and the guys have played with great points. We made our free throws in overtime, uh, but you're right. We're down four with three and a half to go or maybe three minutes to go. Uh, so we really have to fight and grind just to get that thing into overtime. And, and, and again, have to be careful. Gigi's got four fouls. Aaron's got four fouls. Uh, so it's not like you can get super aggressive if you're Aaron. You've got to be smart and uh, smart along the way with that too. And he, and he just did a brilliant job. And so we made shots, we made plays, and we got the stops we needed to get it into overtime. Uh, and then we did a terrific job in overtime. So uh, I loved uh, the poise that we played with. Thank you. Appreciate it.